This chapter will focus on refining a KPI. Specifically, we will focus on creating a KPI that will enable a dashboard designer to easily add grouping, filtering, and drilling down capabilities to this KPI. The sample data that we'll be using in this tutorial is derived from our sample database called Synatica 2010. First, let's make a copy of the KPI called 3.2.1 by doing the following. Let's rename the KPI so we can associate this KPI with this tutorial for future reference. Now let's edit this KPI we created. This will bring up the following in the content pane. Now let's move to the dimensions tab. In most cases, KPIs with time as a dimension will need to be grouped, filtered, and or drilled down on by a range of time. To facilitate this, we have to turn the dimension to a full dimension. Before we can do this, we need to have a time dimension created. Fortunately, we did this in tutorial 3.1.2, creating a time dimension. To start this process, we need to click on this button. Note that this button will only be available if there has been a time dimension created. Let's choose 3.1.2 and click Next. Preview to make sure the dimension will satisfy the time periods for your KPI. What that means is, if you need to see monthly data and the time dimension only has years, that would be a problem. In our case, we want to see monthly revenue and expenses at a minimum. This dimension does have a month level, so we are good to go. Click Next to continue. Now, if we want the dashboard designer to be able to use this dimension to group, filter, and drill down on this KPI, we need to make this dimension public. Feel free to enter a dashboard label description, but we won't here. Let's take a look at this property. Only those dimensions defined in the time dimension will show up. This is where you would set the default time level, also called a grain, for the KPI. For example, if you set the default to year, the KPI will group by the year as a default level when showing in a dashboard. In our case, let's set it to month so we can see the monthly trend of revenue versus expense. Now let's check this off. This means the dashboard designer can now implement the functionality to allow those viewing dashboards to choose their own grain level. In this case, the dashboard viewer can now choose to see their data by year, month, or day. Let's move on to select and default start date. The default value is set to all, but in most cases, you'll want to set it to the time dimension's default start value. In our case, the default value was January 2006. Next, check this off. Now you can allow the dashboard designer to enable selecting a range of time for this KPI. Let's set the default end date to the dimension's end date which was end of today. Click next to continue. We're going to ignore this step, but a quick explanation is in order. In short, the purpose of this step is to limit access to time ranges available. For example, if any data prior to the start of the current year is forbidden, then you would create a rule here. Typically, this is unnecessary as it should be done during the creation of the dimension. Click next to close this wizard. Finally, check in the KPI like so. Now it will be available for the dashboard designer for use. Now we have completed a KPI that a dashboard designer can easily add common functionality such as grouping, filtering, and drill down to. This concludes our tutorial on enabling interactivity on a KPI.